Hi cuties, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top five things that I've done that have tremendously helped my mental health. Now, before we get started, let's address the elephant in the room. Mel, why do you look better than you usually do? What an astute observation. I'm about to go out, okay? I'm going to a Valentine's Day party and I kind of popped off with this look, I feel like. But anyways, I just feel a little bit more dressed up than I usually am. So I just wanted to address that. But um, today's video is going to be a fun one because your girl's been through it. She's really been through it with her mental health and I'm in an amazing place with my mental health and I have been for a couple of years now. So I do feel like I have some wisdom to share. Before we kick things off, of course, I am not a mental health professional. I am not a doctor. I hope that's obvious. I am sharing simply from my own personal experience. If you are struggling with any mental health issues, please, please, please speak to your doctor. If you don't have access to a doctor, there are tons of free online resources. You can Google mental health resources in your location and there should be some resources available to you. I wanna make it clear that I am simply sharing for you know informational purposes only. And if you are really struggling, please just reach out, get the help that you need. I know what it's like to be in a really dark place. I'm no longer there and I'm gonna be sharing some things that have helped me get out of that dark place, but I want to acknowledge that it is not as easy as I may make it seem in this video. Mental health is very personal, very nuanced. I wish that mental health issues weren't so rampant and I wish that there wasn't so many people that struggle, but it's, it's the case and I wish that there was more access to resources because it can be very expensive and not accessible to people to get the help that they need. So I want to acknowledge first off that I've been very privileged in my mental health journey where I have had access to help. And so I wanna acknowledge that this is going to look different for everyone. And from the bottom of my heart, I really wish that things were different. And I hope that no matter where you're at in your journey, some of these things can help you and you can get some perspective on where I came from and my journey. So also going to be touching mainly on the things that have helped me. I'm not going to touch too much on, you know, exactly what my mental health was like. Just know that I'm speaking from an experience of being in like a really bad place. I'm speaking from a place of having been extremely depressed, like non-functional, extremely anxious, in like really, really, really bad shape. I'm not top talking about like, oh, I was a bit stressed this one year, something like that. Like I'm talking about diagnosed depression and anxiety. Sometimes it can be weird to see someone be in a better place and think how could that person have been in such a bad place? And I just wanna challenge that notion that depression, anxiety, any type of mental health challenges, they don't look a certain way. They can affect anyone of any, you know, background, any socioeconomic class. I have no idea what someone is going through based on how they look or how they may be behaving. A lot of times people go through these battles really privately and you would have never known. So I just want to put that out there that, you know, you never know what someone is going through. And for me, I, it's, it's like hard for me even to go back to that place, but I do know like how dark it has been. And I would say, just for some context, the first time I really experienced mental health challenges was when I was 19. I fell into a depression and that was the first time. I think I'd struggled with it mildly, but like it came out of seemingly nowhere. And I was like extremely, extremely depressed. And then 19 to 29, I'm 29 now, so 10 years, I had three major depressive episodes that lasted from a couple of months to a year plus. And I will go through the things that have helped me, but basically I'm coming from a place of having come out of three major depressive episodes. And so I haven't had one of those episodes since I was 25. So it's been about four or five years. And I know that I'm likely going to experience one of those again simply because like my doctors have told me that each time you have a depressive episode, the chances of you having another one increases. So I know that I have to be really on top of my mental health and taking care of myself because it's only a matter of time before I go into another one of these episodes. And hopefully with all of the work that I've done, it will be better than it has been, but I just know that the chances are, are likely that I will experience this again. So. 
That's why I have thought about this stuff so much and I am someone that I have to put my mental health first above everything else because I can't risk like becoming non-functional like I have been. Okay, so let's get into the five things. Number one, medication. Now, people have different opinions on this. People have different experiences on this. This is my own personal experience. Nothing has helped me more than medication. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm on or what I have taken in the past. I just don't think that that's appropriate or that it's going to be helpful. But I will tell you that the medication that I'm on, I'm on two, so it's like a combo deal. And I've been on it for the past almost five years. And it has worked amazingly for me. I am in the most stable place that I've ever been in and I can attribute it mainly to medication. So when I was 19, I started my first medication, tried it out and with varying success throughout the decade that I've been dealing with this, I've tried different medications, I've tried different combinations and for me personally, my success came when I saw a psychiatrist. So I had been trying out medications with my family doctor and again, varying degrees of success, but it really wasn't until I saw a psychiatrist through my university. I was so lucky to have access to this person and he really like changed my life and changed my mental health journey. He was incredible, not only working with me to help me get on the right medication, but he treated me like a real person and as if like I wasn't lesser than because I was struggling with mental health. Every time before that, I had professionals that I felt like were kind of looking down on me because I was in such a bad place. And he was the first person that just completely saw me for me, did not make me feel lesser than, and he worked with me to get on this specific combination. And I've been amazing ever since. And, you know, I'm so glad that I got that at the tail end of my university experience, got on the right meds, and I have been on that ever since. Not everyone is going to have access to a psychiatrist, but I will say that it changed the game for me because your family doctor will know. It can guide you and provide assistance, but a psychiatrist is someone who knows the medicine like intimately and knows like all of the different combos and things that you can take. And I just have to say that meeting that psychiatrist and having him help me like truly changed the game for me. So medication, I, I cannot say it enough. Like I don't know what my mental health would be like without it because I have been medicated for like over five years consistently. And before that I had tried different things. And I just wanna say that there's a lot of like discourse online and a lot of people want to tackle their mental health naturally. They don't wanna take medication and I get that. I get that, that's your preference. For me it was like, do I want to be a functioning, healthy, happy human or do I want to be like extremely depressed and non-functional and like not in a good place. It's like, to me, it's it's night and day. And yeah, I would prefer to not be on, be on medication because they do have some side effects, but it's like literally life-saving for me. And the only reason that I'm in a happy and healthy relationship, that I have a career, that I feel fulfilled and happy every day is because of, because of this medication, I can almost guarantee. It's hard to know, all this stuff works in combination, right? But I had to say like number one is medication because everything else, I wouldn't be able to do unless the medication brought me to my base level. And that's how I like to describe medication for people is that normal, not normal. If you have mental health problems, you are normal, bestie. People that do not experience mental health challenges are here, okay? They're functioning, they wake up every day, they can get out of bed, they don't want to mm, themselves. If you have mental health challenges, medication will bring you to normal. Okay, it will bring you to a baseline so that then you can do these healthy habits that people who are here have access to. So that's how I would describe medication. And I wanted to talk about it too because there is still a bit of a stigma around it. There doesn't have to be, there shouldn't be. When I met my current family doctor a couple of years ago, I came to her and I had already been on these meds and I told her what I was taking. And this was like after years of feeling like stigmatized, feeling like put down by professionals. And even when I would go to the pharmacy, every time I was like so nervous because I knew they were gonna like make a comment about being on meds, whatever. My family doctor said, what a beautiful combination. 
bless her soul. She said that because she had experienced so many of her patients beyond this specific combo and that it had worked really well for them. So when she said that, I was like, thank you. And yes, it is a beautiful combination because it's really helped me. So anyways, if medication is a route that you want to consider or if, that, if it's something that you're currently pursuing, I'm with you, bestie, I'm with you and it's life-changing. So don't be ashamed of it and spread the word you know be proud of this tool that you have found okay number two we're starting off with the stereotypical things like the obvious things number two is therapy again i wish that everyone had access to therapy not everyone does it is very expensive it really is the first time i went to therapy i was 19. it was my mom found my therapist and she was good but there was this there was almost like this power imbalance. Again, I was in such a bad place. I was so young and my mom had chosen this therapist for me that when I showed up, it felt like I was just like this broken person coming to her for help. And again, she was good, but that relationship started off as like me, a depressed person, a broken person. Like I, I if you were depressed, you were not broken, okay? When I look back on that version myself, that was a broken version of myself. So I'm speaking about my own personal experience. But if you are struggling, you are not inherently broken, okay? And I guess maybe I shouldn't even speak that way about myself, but I just know what kind of place I was in back then and she was not well. She was not well. And I went to therapy with that therapist for a couple of years and she served a purpose. And it, that was the beginning of my mental health journey. And then I stopped going because I was feeling pretty good. And then about five years ago, I was feeling pretty good. And I thought, you know what? I need to go back to therapy and I need to build a relationship with my therapist when I'm in a good spot because I need my therapist to see me when I'm happy and healthy and well, so that if something were to happen, for example, I would go back into a depressive episode. My therapist would be able to see that that was not normal for me. When I met my first therapist when I was 19, she only knew me as someone who was extremely depressed. So I decided to go to a therapist that a friend had recommended. I got along so well with her. She helped me through a breakup that I was going through at that time. And I have been going to her ever since. And she has seen me through a lot of ups and downs, but she hasn't seen me through a depressive episode. She has helped me navigate you know, relationships, career, health, a lot of different things, but from like a place where I'm extremely stable, but I'm able to work with her on things. And if you have access to that, I highly recommend building a relationship with a therapist when you feel like your mental health is good so that you have support when your mental health takes a turn one day. Because inevitably, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm expecting my mental health to you know, not be as good at some point in my life. I don't know when it's gonna happen, knock on when it doesn't happen, but this is so important for me to have a relationship with my therapist where she knows me, you know, and she knows what my baseline is. She knows what my like demeanor is when I am healthy so that she can help me through a period when I am not at my healthiest. So therapy has been a game changer for me. I don't go that often, again, because I'm not really in a crisis state. I'm really in a maintenance state. I go every two to three months because you know I have a couple of sessions per year covered from work and then I do pay out of pocket for additional sessions. For me, it is very worth it and I'm so grateful that I have access to therapy. If you don't have access to therapy, what I love is that there's a lot of psychologists and professionals on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube that are actually putting out a lot of free resources. So dive into that, see what you can find for free. And you can also look at sliding scale therapy. So you can Google sliding scale and your insert your city, sliding scale therapy, insert your city. When I was in a bad spot, I actually went to therapy. If you're in Calgary, I went to the Calgary Counseling Center and I saw an intern who was going through, you know, an internship. She was just new to it, but I saw her for $8 a session. And at the time I had no income and that's why the sliding scale, they were able to give me such a low price. But, um, and yeah, it was maybe not the most productive because 
you know, I, I remember her saying to me like, you're so self-aware, you're so self-aware. And I felt like I was a little bit more advanced in my, or I needed more advanced therapy than she was able to give me, but it still gave me that space, that container to go and to work through my issues for $8 an hour. So into sliding scale, sometimes you'll be able to get a better price. Sometimes it'll just be like a little bit of a price reduction. It may not be like $8, you know, like right now I pay over $200 for an hour session, but for me, it's it's worth it, and it's like an investment into my health, and I'm 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 happy that I have access to that. But definitely, therapy is something to look into. Really, better your mental health, and like I said, if you can go when you're in a in a healthy space, you can go in and go. Okay, today I want to talk through like this. I want to go through this instead of going in and looking for coping strategies. Like when I first started therapy, I was so depressed. I was looking for coping strategies, but now I'm going in and I'm able to discuss something that i'm working through in a way that's like very collaborative because i feel like i'm showing up in a way that i'm like i'm good but there's something that i'm dealing with so let's talk through it it's like so empowering and such an amazing experience so i hope that i hope that at some point you get to experience that as well okay number three so this one is hard because i know how annoying it can be when you are depressed and you can't get out of bed and people are telling you, you should work out, it will help you. You should move your body. You know, have you heard of endorphins? I get that that's really annoying to hear, but I'm also here to tell you that they're right. Now, if you're in a really bad spot, going to the gym may not be an option for you. However, what you could try to do is getting outside for a walk. When I've been at my most depressed, I was doing multiple walks a day because it was honestly one of the only times that I felt kind of good. Moving my body, being outside, having time to myself. Walking really like, I wanna say it like saved me. And I think that you may think like, well, what's the point? You know, it's just walking. Walking is a really great form of exercise and you'd be surprised at how much it could help your mental health so if you're in a bad spot I would recommend trying to push yourself to go for a walk it could be 10 minutes it could be half an hour it could be an hour and see how that makes you feel now that I'm in a more stable place I'm now going to the gym regularly I've been going three times a week this is relatively new actually I started like three or four months ago four months ago and it's really changed the game for me, honestly. It has helped me so much. It has helped my mental health so much. And it's, again, it's kind of annoying that like they were right. But endorphins are real. Moving your body, investing in your health. And again, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't need to get into weightlifting. You don't need to be going to spin classes unless you want to. But it can be small steps to help yourself and your mental health and your physical health are so tied and sometimes i wish that it wasn't so so that i could you know be lazy and sit on the couch and not exercise and it wouldn't affect my mental health but then again how amazing that there's something that we can do for our physical body that also benefits our our mental body right so yeah i mean i don't have too much to add to this because i'm not a personal trainer I, I don't know exactly what your body needs or what you what is going to work for you. The only thing that I know is that my mental health is better when I am exercising regularly, period. Like, it's just how it is. And I will say that I really like to achieve a balance. And if I'm going too hard, if I'm you know exercising too much or it's too intense, it can go the opposite direction for me. It can put a lot of stress on my body. You want to be engaging in movement and an exercise practice in a way that's going to be helpful to you and not harmful. So that's my number three, move your body if you can and see how it makes you feel. Number four, you're not gonna like this one because I didn't like this one. I really did not like this one. Number four is I have significantly reduced my alcohol consumption. And it took me a long time to do this, okay? From age 19 to 27, 
I drank quite frequently, like I really did. It was part of my lifestyle. I was like a wine girly, a cocktail girly. Um, I would drink a lot when it came to like my job. I work in marketing and before I was at a PR agency and it felt like we were always at events, always like having cocktails. And um, it took me a long, long, long time to realize that alcohol was not serving my mental health. And it took me a long time to realize that after a couple of drinks, I would feel, I would get like a headache. I wouldn't feel good physically. I wouldn't feel good mentally. And then more specifically, the next day, I would have really like low mental health. So I would either have like anxiety where I would be extremely anxious or I would feel very low as in like my depression would come back like the day after I was drinking. And obviously it was worse if I was binge drinking, but it was even happening if I had two drinks, even one drink. So in the past year, I have cut down on my alcohol consumption probably like 70% and it has helped me so much. Again, it's helped my physical and my, my mental, but it's mainly been mental. Um, I've been sleeping better, I've been saving money, and just overall, I don't have those like really low dips in my mental health because of the drinking. So it's one of those things, again, like I hate to tell you this, you know, I wish that I could enjoy my cocktails and my wine and I didn't have the repercussions, but that's just not life and that's just not reality. So if you are someone who consumes alcohol, maybe take a look and just see, like maybe reduce it a little bit. I'm not saying you have to cut it out completely. I haven't cut it out. I may one day cut it out completely, but for right now, I have just reduced it. I've also been tracking with this app called Sunnyside and you basically plan when you're gonna drink and it holds you accountable and I've been really loving it. It has just helped me put into perspective how much I'm drinking, why I'm drinking, you know, really planning for a special occasion instead of just drinking multiple times a week because that's what I do. So that's my fourth tip is to look into your drinking, you know, just keep an eye on it. This can fluctuate as well. Like for me, when there's been times where I've been like really depressed, I don't drink at all because if I'm in a really bad spot when I'm sober, then when I'm drinking, like I could be crying, I could be, you know, not in a good spot. When I'm a little bit healthier, I can handle a couple of cocktails, but you know, you have to learn what is right for you and right for your body and your mind, but that is something that I would look into, okay? You don't have to cut it out, but just look into it and pay attention to it and see how drinking makes you feel. Okay, we're on to our fifth one. So I was trying to think about how to put this one into words, and I think that it's, working on your self-esteem and sense of self. When I've been really depressed, I remember that I felt so low and I did not feel confident at all. And I had zero self-esteem. I had no trust in myself because I didn't trust that I could you know, live a good life. I felt like my body and my mind were failing me. I felt like I couldn't do anything. I felt like paralyzed. I, there was times when I was really depressed when I felt like I couldn't work or I couldn't go to school so then I just didn't. But then I had no purpose. I, you know, just existed and was just sleeping a lot and I was extremely depressed. And it's a chicken or the egg situation because if you're really depressed, you don't have motivation to do anything. But then if you don't do anything, you have no reason to, you know, believe that you are capable of doing things and it really has an impact on your self-esteem. So I know that, again, if you're in a bad spot, this is hard. Like when I say like, you gotta do things and you gotta work on your self-esteem, I know that that's hard, but for me, working on my self-esteem and you know setting goals achieving those goals even if they're like so small for example when i was depressed i was sleeping way too much so i got an app on my phone and i started tracking my sleep and i started challenging myself to not sleep as long as i was and that was a game changer because i could work on things you know so you have to set yourself like goals no matter how big or small they are you have to um, figure out things that you like doing, that you're good at doing so that you can build your self-esteem because that really ties into your mental health. And then when it comes to sense of self, it's important for you to figure out like what you like. And this can be hard because sometimes when you're depressed, you're like, I don't like anything but find something you like a little bit, you know? YouTube is great for this where you can find content on a whole bunch of different things. And I just found when I was depressed, I was so aimless. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I liked. 
And so I had to figure that out. I had to figure out like, what does healthy me look like? And what does healthy me like? So that I could try and work towards that, you know? If you don't know what you're working towards, then you're truly just aimless. So my last tip, it's a little bit vague, but it's to work on your self-esteem and to work on your sense of self so that you can start building the foundations of who you are going to be, who you want to be, who you know you are truly in your core when you are healthy. So that's what I've got for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you're struggling with your mental health, I see you and my heart goes out to you. Please reach out, get the help that you need. I hope that some of these tips, you will consider them and you know implement them in a small way. If you are also on a mental health journey, I would love to know what are some things that have helped you. Do we have any similarities? Let's chat about it in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you. I speak often on mental health and I think that there's some other videos of mine that you would really love. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.